It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather. And he who controls the weather will control the world. Another week has come and gone in the planetary asylum. The circus of insanity continues across the board. Will the stock market Ponzi scheme save us? No. Will the scripted election theater of the absurd save us? Definitely not. Are we circling the drain? Definitely yes. In this broadcast, new headlines acknowledging climate modification to increase and decrease precipitation. The controllers get to choose where it rains, how much, and how toxic that rain will be. Crashing fish populations, salmon fishing shut down again, mass sea lion die off, doomsday glacier implosion, extreme hail warfare, microplastics in the family jewels, the bird flu blow up, fires, floods, and the scheduled hurricane season from hell. All this and more. Stay tuned. First, tech to the rescue. From the Middle East Monitor.com, cloud seeding program plans to protect Macaw and Holy Sites weather. The Saudi Regional Cloud Seeding Program confirmed that Macaw and the Holy Sites will be given priority while implementing this new technology of cloud seeding program. Was Dubai given the same sort of priority recently? They continue, the program said that its weather improvement department is working under the supervision of experts to improve weather conditions in the targeted areas, including the Holy City of Macaw and the Holy Sites of Mina, Arafat, and Muzdalifa. Hope I got that right. Yeah, they're going to improve the weather. Climate manipulation for religious events, sports events, just to generally improve the weather, we're told. How's that going so far, overall, globally? From AP News, Indonesia seeds clouds to block rainfall after floods killed at least 67 people while 20 are missing. They can push the pendulum both directions, and they are, on a scale that truly defies comprehension. So, in those two new headlines, clear confirmation of climate engineering rain blocking and rain enhancing potentials. Translation, climate engineering operations, which are inconceivably more massive than the all but meaningless small scale cloud seeding operations, single engine propeller driven planes with a few flares on the wings as compared to a KC-135 that can carry 100 tons in a single payload. Those types of operations with the big jet tankers are determining the drought deluge scenarios along with frequency transmissions that manipulate the atmosphere that's saturated with these electrically conductive particulates, all of them toxic. The controllers don't care. They've never cared about the consequences. In fact, the consequences serve them on different layers. Populations that are increasingly debilitated and dumbed down literally with a neurological system that's being overloaded with these bioavailable and bioaccumulative particulates are much easier to control. And we cannot begin to state the totality of what might be in or on those particulates without knowing exactly what we're looking for. They can do anything they want in the atmosphere. No one has stood up to stop them. That must change. The Climate Engineering Global Manhattan Project rages on. Speaking of which, new from Bloomberg.com, giant hail is the weather threat keeping insurers up at night. The report says powerful hailstorms are wreaking more destruction in the US and Europe at a cost of billions of dollars a year. Here's a question. Why are so few even asking? Why nearly every storm now produces extreme hail, quantity and size. Hail which is inflicting extraordinary damage to everything on the ground. Chemical ice nucleation cloud seeding, patented processes, is a core aspect of climate engineering that unfortunately only geoengineeringwatch.org is trying to bring to light. I can only hope this changes because we are rapidly running out of time. Please search the engineering winter section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org to look at patents for these processes and the effect of them, which is absolutely profound, and admissions by other governments like the Chinese government that they were actively performing these operations over cities like Beijing, doing billions of dollars worth of damage, exactly like what's happening here. But if you bring this subject up here, suddenly you're a, quote, conspiracy theorist. And I'm so absolutely fed up with that term, which, as I've stated so many times in the past, it's a term that's the final fallback of the factless and the fearful. And there's far too many of that type of individual in our society. 
from MSN. Heavy equipment snow shovels used to clean up hail piled knee deep in small Colorado city. Reports as residents in a small city in northeastern Colorado were cleaning up Tuesday of this week after hail the size of baseballs and golf balls pounded the community. The storm in Yuma shattered vehicle windshields, pounded the siding off buildings, and broke many windows. Knee deep chemically nucleated hail in Colorado. While chemically nucleated so-called snow continues to fall off and on in four or five Pacific Northwest states, while so much of the planet is in total meltdown, are the chemical cooldowns the result of an Air Force that has three times more jet tanker aircraft than all other militaries in the world combined? You decide. But the frozen material does contain climate engineering elements, which our lab testing has long since proven. And for those that are still trying to decipher, why would governments seed clouds with chemical ice nucleating elements why wouldn't they this is a form of covert weather warfare they can blame whatever damage they do on nature and these short-term toxic surface cooldowns that are highly sensationalized by matrix media help to divide and confuse the population on the true state of climate damage that's already irreparable and been inflicted on the planet while paradoxically at the same time increasing that damage in the attempt to mask it or cover it up as I cover the following headline, keep this in mind. Polymer fibers, polymer microfibers, are part of the climate engineering mix. On that note, new from the UK Guardian and numerous other sources, microplastics found in every human testicle in study. From the report, scientists say discovery may be linked to decades-long decline in sperm counts in men around the world. Report then says, Scientists tested 23 human testes as well as 47 testes from pet dogs. They found microplastic pollution in every single sample. The human testicles had a plastic concentration almost three times higher than that found in the dog testes. Is that any surprise? It shouldn't be. Geoengineeringwatch.org lab tests prove that polymer fibers are in our rain, which means they're in our air, which means they're in our bodies, food, and waters. Yes, our filth-filled skies. Please check the jet spraying section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org for shocking proof-positive film footage of jet aircraft dispersions in our skies. Footnote, again I ask, why are so many self-proclaimed truth-tellers now towing the line for the controllers by pushing the patently false narrative that we're only seeing jet exhaust in our skies? Are those that propagate such a disinformation Working both sides of the fence? Who can say? Stop and consider what you can see with your own eyes. Photos of retrofit nozzles on large carrier jet wing pylons. Nozzles aimed into the exhaust jet stream to create the illusion that we're seeing only condensation, which we shouldn't see behind a high bypass turbofan jet engine anyway. Trails which linger and spread at times for hours. Defying the laws of physics because it isn't condensation at all. Multiple patents that describe in great detail the kind of aircraft dispersion mechanisms used for such dispersions. Patents going back over a hundred years, all the way back to 1923, with tanks, pumps, and nozzles. View the first few minutes of geoengineeringwatch.org's groundbreaking documentary, The Dimming. Better to view the whole film, but you'll see in the first few minutes very clear documentation of these types of spray mechanisms apparatus designed for heavy jet aircraft jet tankers passenger carriers first few minutes of geoengineeringwatch.org and consider this one day may have jets crisscrossing the skies with lingering spreading sky blocking filth and the next day over the same location there may be few or no jets this can especially be determined in a remote region such as the wilderness where i live in northern california Jets that leave a trail clear across the horizon and then suddenly shut off their dispersion. Yet, they don't fall from the sky, do they? Are they suddenly just gliding? Really? Jets flying in trajectories that are completely perpendicular to any commercial routes, often in loops, making X's back and forth, as can be monitored with flight tracker sources. That is, unless the transponders of some jets are turned off, which they are. And how can that be? It's illegal. Unless it's some sort of military operation. Connect the dots, examine the data, use your God-given sense of deductive reasoning, and consider that 
the entire climate science community is pushing desperately for militaries to put jets in the air and spray sun-blocking particles, but then they say we're not seeing what we're seeing. Again, we live in an asylum. The it's just jet exhaust narrative is total disinformation. It would only be propagated by the clueless or the dishonest. From ABC Australia, Australia's first human case of bird flu detected. From the star.com, second U.S. dairy worker infected with bird flu confirmed in Michigan. From investigatemidwest.com, highly pathogenic avian influenza spreading among commercial and backyard birds. They say for the first time the virus has spread to dairy cows and humans in the U.S., confirming the first two headlines. Here's a question. Are the manipulators of the matrix slowly ramping up the next wave? Again, you decide. From conflict zones to climate engineering to the mainstream media weapon of mass distraction, the parasitic predator class controls it all, at least for the moment. When so many are so willing to turn two blind eyes to glaringly obvious and inarguable dire realities, because such realities are too psychologically threatening, where does that leave us? Not just as so-called civilized societies, but as a species. Are we likely to survive the long haul with chronic denial or willful delusion being so epidemic in the ranks of the human race? Are we likely to survive even the short-term horizon with such a malignant mental malady being so prevalent? In both scenarios, long or short-term, the answer is no. Short of a mass awakening of clear-sightedness and reason, our days are numbered. That's not an opinion. It's a statistical trajectory. Before covering the next few headline examples, remember and consider the chemical ice nucleation cloud seeding factor, which absolutely isn't just an unintended result of jet exhaust from aircraft that are often flying everywhere but commercial routes, sometimes with their transponders turned off. And in lockstep with these operations, we have various forms of frozen stuff falling from skies in numerous locations around the U.S., even now at the end of May. So, how can we have headlines like this at the same time? From ABC News, hottest May temperature in North American history, that is in the continent of North America, 124.7 degrees in Galinas, Mexico, covered part of that last week, and we don't know the humidity. We're trying to find that out because if there was any significant humidity at all, and there must have been, given the location that this temperature occurred, even if it was only, for example, 40% humidity, the heat index would be somewhere in the range of the high 100 degree range, as in approaching 200. And there's numerous heat index calculators. I encourage you to find them easily searched online. You can plug in the ambient temperature and the humidity, and you will be very surprised at how fast the feels like temperature goes up when there's humidity because the human body can no longer cool itself. So if we take that same temperature again, just reported by ABC News, happened in Galinas, Mexico in about mid-May, 124.7 degrees, even with 30% humidity, that's a heat index of about 160 degrees in that range. Nobody reporting on this because they don't want you to know how high what's called the wet bulb temperatures are. That's a temperature that's not tolerable to the human body. Let's keep going. From ABC News, hottest day in Yucatan history, 113 degrees. Again, there has to be significant humidity there because it's, again, near the Caribbean. Bottom line is the Feels like temperatures are not being reported because they are so astronomically high that they don't want to panic populations, but they're high enough where wildlife is dying and literally dropping to the ground. I'll get to that in a moment. From the Miami Herald, it's the hottest May ever in Miami. Heat index completely off the charts. That's exactly the quote from the Miami Herald. Next, a headline roundup for what's scheduled for other sections of the U.S., from Fox News, Central U.S. braces for a potential derecho packed with extreme 100-plus mile-per-hour wind gust, baseball-sized hail, or larger. This comes on the heels, the report says, of another deadly derecho that barreled across Texas and Louisiana. Covered that before. Blasting the Houston metro area with winds up to 100 miles per hour. Some reports or some sources said even higher than that that left at least seven people dead and more than a million customers without power. The report then says... The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Storm Prediction Center increased the severe weather threat for destructive wind gusts and hail. 
The threat, they say, will expand, putting tens of millions of people at risk of seeing extreme weather. Life-threatening lightning, tornadoes, damaging wind gusts, and large hail, they say, will all be possible. Here's the overall rundown. Same pattern that I cited in last week's broadcast. Zonal flows of moisture are being manipulated in from the Pacific, heavily chemically nucleated. That's creating a cold, dense surface layer of air that is then collided with a flow of warm moisture from the record warm Gulf of Mexico. Colliding air masses of hot and cold air create atmospheric instability, which then fuels cyclonic rotations, extreme convection, ideal conditions for creating extreme surface winds, which augment the chemical ice nucleating elements, aka hail, and we end up where we are. We can speculate about agendas, we can speculate about objectives, but the fact that these operations are ongoing is beyond dispute if all the data is examined. This is Dane Wigington. You're listening to the weekly installment of the commercial-free, non-political global alert news report, The End of the World as We Know It, broadcast brought to you by geoengineeringwatch.org, the largest and most visited website in the world and the subject of global climate engineering operations, a.k.a. weather warfare. Reaching a critical mass of awareness is still the goal, always will be the goal. If we can expose this issue fully, we will cause a shockwave around the world, and that is the only way forward in this fight. We must reach a critical mass by starting a conversation on climate engineering that leads people to a credible source of data. Geoengineeringwatch.org will continue all of our efforts to be the go-to source on covert climate intervention operations. Start a conversation on climate engineering with Geoengineering Watch awareness raising materials available on our homepage. If we can fully expose weather warfare, so many other truths will be forced to the full light of day with it. We pass on our printed materials for less than our overall cost of producing and shipping. Our only goal, my only goal, is to stop the insanity in our skies once and for all while there's still some part of our planet's life support systems left to salvage. From the UK Guardian, economic damage from climate change six times worse than thought. They say a 1C increase in global temperature leads to a 12% decline in world gross domestic product, researchers have found. The report then states, global heating set to shrink wealth at a rate consistent with the level of financial losses of a continuing permanent war, researchers have found. The article continues, a 3C temperature increase will cause, quote, precipitous declines in output. Question, do they mean like right now? and getting worse by the day because unfiltered frontline temperature data indicates we are past 3.5 degrees C now, not somewhere off over the horizon now. More on the wider horizon shortly, and yes, what's unfolding is exponentially worse and more immediate than what the public has been told with climate disruption operations greatly accelerating the entire process. And this is exactly what Geoengineering Watch has stated from day one. It's not as bad as we're being told. It's exponentially worse than we're being told. But so many have been so well trained to justifiably have such disdain for people like Al Gore or the hypocrisy of all the environmental groups, so-called green groups, that will not mention climate engineering. Such disdain that they take the opposite position of anything these groups or people say or are concerned about. And that's not rational reasoning. This equation is complex, and there is no rationally denying that, taken as a whole, the human race has treated planet Earth with unimaginable contempt. We have been extremely poor stewards of this planet in too many ways to even begin to discuss this broadcast. It would take hours and hours. So the damage to the planet is a this and that equation. It's not just from one cause. It's from many causes, and it's important to keep that in mind if you want to keep credibility, which is essential for to move this fight forward at all. Let's focus first on exposing and halting climate engineering, and then we can focus on the rest. But all of us from any side of the climate debate, from any perspective, must remember, no legitimate discussion about that subject, climate anything, from any perspective without first and foremost addressing climate engineering. Here's more confirmation of, quote, it's way worse than we thought. From the UK Guardian, last summer's temperature rise could be worse than we thought. Well, Everywhere we check, we see a routine underreporting of official high temperatures. Not overreporting, but underreporting. And the rise in nighttime temperatures is happening even faster. And I'll try to get to this by next week. That's causing the behavior of animals to change. They are staying out at night 
as opposed to daytime because they can't take the heat anymore. We see cows and pastures here in Northern California that are hiding in the shade at eight o'clock in the morning because the UV is so intense because the ozone layer is shredded, climate engineering core to that equation, that single component, if we had no other challenges or threats, that one scenario, the collapse, functional collapse of the ozone layer holds our collective future in the balance and that's only one nail in our collective coffin. There are so many more and yet, how many are going about their business right now like nothing's wrong and they tell themselves if they just ignore it long enough, it'll go away. Good luck with that. From the New York Times, world's oceans have gone, quote, crazy haywire, officials warn, with majority of coral reefs in peril. They continue. Conditions last year were so unusually warm in some waters that heat stress levels were literally off the charts of NOAA's alert system, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And if you think you heard this headline about the corals before, you haven't heard this headline. You've heard other headlines as this scenario has progressed week after week and month after month, getting worse by the day. And now all coral reefs everywhere are undergoing this process, all of them dying. And there's rarely any mention of the kelp forests, which are an even bigger ecosystem. And they're all but gone already all around the world. And, and again, this being very difficult for me to accept because I've spent so much of my former life in the kelp forests hours and hours day after day and to know they're gone and that I can never show my children these wonders that I experienced so much is painful and it's not coming back that's what too many people don't understand you can't just stop this kind of momentum and about the ocean as I've stated so many times, a cubic meter of seawater contains 4,000 times the thermal energy of a cubic meter of air. As the oceans go, so will the atmosphere. And the climate engineers have done their best to bottle that heat up in the oceans. They've affected upper level wind currents, which has affected ocean currents, which has affected the Enzo patterns, the La Nina, El Nino cycle, which has helped to bottle up some of the heat in the oceans. Now it's coming out with a vengeance. Here's a reminder of last year's ocean heat off the coast of Florida, 102 degrees, same temperature Jacuzzi Hot Tubs recommends for their product, 102 degrees. Nothing can survive in that in the ocean. 500 plus dead zones all over the world right now expanding by the day. More in the fishing situation, fisheries in a moment, stay tuned. From AP News, a parallel headline, experts say coral reef bleaching near record level globally. That's, it's not near record level. It's, it's way exceeding record level. They always put some sort of incorrect statement or term in these headlines to make it seem like it's been a little worse before when it absolutely hasn't. From Reuters, boiling, not warming. Marine life suffers as Thai sea temperatures hit record. It's over 91 degrees there now, off the charts. From AccuWeather.com, 2024 Atlantic hurricane season is primed for storms with, quote, rapid intensification. Anybody remember what happened in Acapulco six months ago? Something like that. Never happened before, ever. A mediocre tropical depression intensified into a off-the-chart, all-time record strength landfall for that location of the world. Cat 5 hurricane that laid waste to Acapulco. It will never come back. It's done. If you haven't seen flyover photos of what happened after that storm, take a look. 12 hours went from this insignificant tropical depression to an off-the-chart Cat 5 hurricane in 12 hours. This is atmospheric manipulation, and they are already telling us with a headline like this that that's what's coming. And so many people think, well, they predicted it, so it must just be nature, right? No, wrong. It's called denial. Rapidly intensifying tropical storms, the report says, and hurricanes are especially dangerous because they can give the public less time to prepare. That's the point, isn't it? The AccuWeather article continues, predicting a storm's peak intensity and its intensity at landfall is one of the most challenging aspects of weather forecasting, and a rapidly intensifying hurricane adds tremendously to that challenge. Yes, it's very difficult to predict what's being manipulated, isn't it? Such incredible cowardice from the so-called climate science community that must know this is going on. If they don't know, they're criminally ignorant of the very field of study in which we are told they're experts. From usnews.com, NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, tells U.S. to expect, quote, extraordinary Atlantic hurricane season. They say the time to prepare is now.
Connect the puzzle pieces. Form a clear picture. It's coming. About the rain. Remember and consider the climate engineers control the spigot. With that in mind, from MSN.com, California officials have approved $20 billion in funding for controversial water tunnel. That report states, in the proposal published recently, the state acknowledged that the construction will be widely detrimental to the local ecosystems. The environmental impacts include lost agricultural land, reduced water quality in the Delta, and negative impacts on air quality. How bad can air quality get? It's already packed with highly toxic, bioavailable, bioaccumulative nanoparticulates and about the water, the tunnels, filling the dams. Again, when we can see on satellite imagery exactly what these operations are doing affecting rainfall, we have other countries around the world stating on the record on the floor of the UN, like the leaders of Iran, that NATO was cutting off their precipitation, destabilizing their food production, thus destabilizing their populations. These this weapon of mass destruction that's occurring in our skies that so many are willfully ignoring, pretending it isn't there. Our futures are in the balance. If we don't start collectively behaving accordingly, we'll soon have nothing left to salvage. From climatecrisis247.com, Mexico City is virtually out of water. Scientists have worried that drought around Mexico City, which has over 22 million residents, this is an ongoing story again, would cause the city to run out of water. That day is approaching fast and there is no alternative. The only available option, they say, is to attempt to take water from the aquifers below the city. There's not a large enough supply and as water is drawn from these, the aquifers, which are the partial foundations of Mexico City, the met metropolitan area could sink several feet a year the city, or much of it, would then be destroyed. Their words, not mine. So how's that for an alternative? No water or destroyed city. One more from MSN.com. Citizens face hours-long blackouts as major cities are scorched by record-breaking heat wave. This was something exceptional, the report says. They continue. After unusually hot weather led to rolling power outages in more than half of Mexico's states, the country's president spoke to the media to address the electricity emergency. Reuters reported that 20 of Mexico's 32 federal entities, and I think the number is higher than 20 now, including the capital, Mexico City, dealt with a loss of power amid unseasonably warm temperatures. Not warm, hot. And here's an example of how hot. Next headline from MSN.com and many other sources, Mexico's howler monkeys dropping dead in fierce heat wave. They say at least 83 of the primates, and now I know since this headline, I just saw a recent headline, it's up to 180 or something now. They, they don't know how many. They're, it's only what they find. They say, who are known for their roaring calls were found dead in the Gulf Coast state of Tabasco, where temperatures are forecast to surpass 45C this week. A nationwide drought and heat waves have sent temperatures soaring across much of the country. Let's take a moment to do some math on this of what the likely heat index temperature is in Tabasco, the feels like temperature. 45C is about 113 degrees Fahrenheit. If you plug that into the National Weather Service heat index calculator, because Tabasco is a Gulf Coast state, would not be unlikely for them to have humidities of perhaps 50% in that range, which would put the heat index at about 160 degrees. But nobody publicizes that because it's simply too alarming. But it takes extreme conditions to make monkeys, these primates that have lived there for time immemorial, fall out of the trees dead. And it's not only happening in Mexico, it's happened in Australia as well. The flying foxes falling from the trees dead by the thousands there previously. And yet, we see only day after day of scripted political theater on Matrix Media. Anything that actually, truly matters is omitted. Any existential threats completely swept under the rug. New from Reuters, reeling from one heat wave, Mexico awaits highest temperature ever recorded. Mexico is reeling from a heat wave that has already broken records, caused power outages, and killed people and animals. And they could see, quote, unprecedented temperatures over the next two weeks as well. The country's largest university has warned this week. Alfonso Cortez, a local Catholic archbishop, led a mass for rain. As parishioners fanned themselves in the heat, he said, we are going to pray that the Lord will send our state and all human beings the gift of water, Cortez said. What Cortez should pray for 
is for climate engineering to be exposed and halted because on a rapidly warming planet, it must rain more overall, not less. The atmosphere holds 7% more moisture for every degree C of warming. If it's not raining more overall, I know there's deluges everywhere. When you disrupt the hydrological cycle, you create and further fuel drought and deluge. But overall, that's the context under which I'm speaking. If there's not more overall rain on a rapidly warming planet, there's a factor we're not being told about, and that factor is climate engineering. Desiccant particles that block direct sunlight, that thwart evaporation, that dry up the atmosphere in places where they want to dry it up. If they seed with different elements, they can further fuel the deluge. But the bottom line is no natural weather at this point, period. That's inarguable, absolutely inarguable. Even if you had smaller scale climate engineering operations over one part of the world, that would disrupt the whole world by itself. But in fact, we have operations over the entire world. Countries, even adversarial countries, US, China, Russia, that have absolutely inarguably colluded and cooperated on these programs in the past that may now be infighting with these programs as well. So that makes the equation even worse. Battleground in the atmosphere, stacked on top of all the damage already done by climate engineering and countless other forms of human activity. And none of this bodes well for our collective fate. And for those that think it's some other country interfering with weather over the U.S., guess again, no chance. DOD knows what's going on over our skies. They are neck deep in these operations. And if you think those who control the levers of power care any more for you than they do for those being oppressed and eliminated in conflict zones around the world, guess again. As I've stated so many times, U.S. population, especially big liability for those in power because many U.S. civilians are also armed a rapidly increasing liability for those in power. Think about that. Why do you think they ordered 2.4 billion 40 caliber hollow point bullets in 2012? I've been over that many times. That's if plan A and B don't work out, it seems. From PeninsulaCutter.com, this, over a thousand relief camps, a thousand, set up as Pakistan braces for heat wave. It's not just Mexico. It's all over the globe. The Pakistan Meteorological Department said temperatures are expected to hit as high as 50 degrees Celsius. That's about 122 Fahrenheit in May. Extreme heat in Pakistan is often coupled by deficits in power supplies with areas experiencing up to 15 hours a day of blackout. Think about that. From tillsur.english.net. Silent demise of rangelands threatens food security. They say United Nations Convention to Control Desertification, that's the UNCCD, has just published a report showing that up to 50% of the world's rangelands are degraded, endangering food security and the well-being of billions. Now let's add the fisheries collapse, which I'll get to in a moment. Also billions depend on that. Add those puzzle pieces together. Mad Max is coming. Any way you slice it, no matter what happens. But if we don't abandon our posts, if we expose and halt climate engineering and then start working on the rest of the human insanity that's destroying our host planet Earth, we may yet salvage some part of Earth's life support systems. And if anybody makes it through what's coming, anyone, due to our combined efforts, then the entire battle was worth every step. Let's keep going. There's more. The kind of headlines you will never see on televised U.S. matrix media. From phys.org, drought in Brazil's Cerrado is the worst for at least seven centuries, 700 years, and that's conservative. From Tirun, India, intense heat waves scorches northwest India. Delhi, warmest at 47.4 degrees Celsius. It's about 118 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's add some humidity. Heat index probably... 145, 150, nobody wants to talk about that. Drought and deluge scenarios are inseparable from global climate intervention operations. Here's a case in point from Euronews.com. Europe hit by severe floods in the north and heat waves in the south. The balance is gone. The equilibrium is gone. Earth's former energy balance obliterated. Again, this question, can any weather anywhere be considered natural when the entire global climate system has long since been completely and totally derailed by ongoing and ever-expanding climate disruption operations, aka weather warfare? Of course not. No natural weather. And we get to breathe with their spraying, by the way. When you see a sky filled with jet-dispersed toxic elements, where do you think that's going? To the surface. Again, go out at night, dark night, with no light pollution, brightest light you can find, 
on one of those types of days that I just described, aim that light straight up and look straight up at the beam, you won't believe what you see. It looks like it's snowing and you are sucking that up with every breath you take and it's staying in your body for the most part. Very hard to expel. From BBC.com, flash floods kill at least 50 in Afghanistan. The floods have also killed thousands of cattle, destroyed 2,000 homes, and damaged many more. Much of the farmland has been covered in a thick mud in a country where 80% of the more than 40 million people depend on agriculture. The heavy rain has come after the country experienced a prolonged period of drought earlier in the year. Radical swings, temperatures, precipitation, drought, deluge, flash heat, flash freeze. Welcome to climate engineering, and isn't it amazing how agricultural regions are hit again and again and again with flash everything? Flash drought, flash flood, flash freeze. Not an accident, and not nature. I'm not saying the climate's not damaged anyway. It is damaged. How could it not be damaged given what we've done to the planet? But when you add climate engineering on top of that and using weather as a weapon, environmental modification weapon, that's a recipe for near-term planetary omnicide, and that is the road we are on. From agweb.com. It won't quit raining and farmers are growing frustrated with how quickly planting progress has stalled. It's from the UK, more rains across the Corn Belt this week created deeper planting delays and it's causing farmers to grow even more frustrated as they wait on an open window to plant. From the UK Guardian, Brazil counts cost of worst ever floods with little hope of waters receding. Most Americans have no idea this is going on. They're concerned with the next football game or, or the next political debate with the cast of clowns. It's, it's mind-numbing. It's, it's truly impossible to get your arms around. If there's any intelligent life in the universe and they're watching what our species is up to at this point and what we've been up to and the road we're on, they certainly must think there's no reason to save us. I'm just giving an example of, of what any rational outside onlooker would conclude. That's my point. From ABC News, why climate migration in Brazil has become a global crisis. And for the record, there are dozens of other countries in the same category. The force of climate collapse migration comes in many forms. The flow of climate and environmental collapse refugees will continue to accelerate rapidly. And when the food shelves at Walmart and Costco are empty, we will all join their ranks. About our waters, which we can't survive without. From Newsweek. Drinking water warning issued nationwide in the U.S., of course. According to the EPA, recent federal inspections reveal that 70% of U.S. water systems inspected do not fully comply with requirements in the Safe Drinking Water Act. And don't think because something does comply that it's safe, because it's not. Remember, there's not an uncontaminated drop of rain on planet Earth. Peer-reviewed study proves it, all packed with PFAS forever chemicals. And if you want to know how the system works, take the time to view the film Dark Waters, documentary about a very, very courageous lawyer. If we had more like him in the world, we might be in a different scenario. Very compelling film, and that's how the entire matrix works. The agency added that some systems have, quote, critical cybersecurity vulnerabilities, such as default passwords that have not been updated and single logins that can easily be compromised. What are they doing here? They're trying to paint the picture that someone from some foreign country is going to be the source of the contamination of the American people. Always find a scapegoat. That's exactly what they do. Just like Saddam's WMD that didn't exist. And am I saying Saddam was a great guy? No, of course he was a horrible guy. So why did we arm him with chemical weapons so he could slaughter innocents? And then when he was no longer of use to us, we set him up for the fall and slaughtered his army and many innocent Iraqis that were forced to fight. It's, it's absolutely sickening what goes on. And situations like Kuwait where all the wells that were detonated, many might remember the 700 wells that were set ablaze decimating Earth's atmosphere. It looked like something out of a futuristic horror movie. Who set those wells on fire? U.S. Special Forces confessed now on the record. Not Saddam's army, U.S. Special Forces. And there was meetings months before that with companies like Halliburton and Bechtel Power, Bechtel being my former employer, that were preparing for moving into those countries because of the oil fires that hadn't even started yet, and they knew they were going to start because they were going to start them, at least part of the matrix that Bechtel and Halle Burton are part of. So corrupt. Most Americans have absolutely no concept of how massive and diabolical this cancer is that controls the planet at this point. And there's many factions of this cancer, and that faction, those factions are starting to infight, which is 
going to lead to even more precarious scenarios happening quickly. We are all on a ride from here on out. Here's another headline from MSN.com. Lake Erie is dying. No surprise. Everything everywhere is dying. They say an algae boom runs from West Lake Erie, which sucks out the oxygen and makes it almost impossible for wildlife to live in. A new study shows that the problem has become permanent. The next report gives some confirmation to what I stated a moment ago. Toxic PFAS forever chemicals are ubiquitous in Great Lake basins, air, rain, atmosphere, and water. New peer-reviewed research shows, this is additional research on top of what's already been proven, the first of its kind comprehensive picture of PFAS levels for the basin, that specific region, which holds nearly 95% of the nation's fresh water, also reveals that precipitation is probably a major contributor to the lake contamination. You think? If every single drop of rain is contaminated with PFAS for forever chemicals and 95% of the nation's fresh waters in the Great Lakes, of course they're contaminated. How could they not be contaminated? And we need a team of scientists to tell us that. And what about the fish? From the LA Times, as salmon populations struggle, California bans fishing on rivers for a second year. California regulators have decided to ban fishing of Chinook salmon from the state's rivers for a second year in a row in an effort to help the species recover. They're not going to recover. Let's stop right there. They're not going to recover in any time frame that matters. The planet itself, people think in 10, 20 years, somehow it's going to magically be all better again. If you shut all forms of human activity off right now, based on paleo data of past events, and this event is far worse because it's happening literally hundreds of times faster than previous mass extinctions, it would take equilibrium periods of tens of millions of years to recover. The planet we've known is done. It's gone. It's not coming back. We can accept it well or poorly, but accept it we must. The sooner we accept it, the sooner we rise to the occasion and try to salvage what's left of the planet's life support systems, the more chance we might have of saving something. From KSBW.com, high number of dead sea lions found off the coast of California. Scientists are investigating. They say dead sea lion pups are being discovered off the coast of California. Researchers at the University of California are now trying to pinpoint the cause. They say if this continues for the next few years, this could be a real problem. Could be, and they don't know the cause. The pelicans are dying, the seagulls are dying, the baitfish are dying. Of course the seals are dying. There's nothing for them to eat. The oceans are superheating, deoxygenating, the plankton are dying. How moronic is our so-called science community? It's... I don't have the words anymore. It, it, so few people are willing to face the truth, and those that have gotten their certificate of indoctrination from power structure owned and funded institutions are the hardest to reach of all. They simply toe the line for the power structure. From Intrafish.com, U.S. says action may be warranted. Enlisting Alaska king salmon is endangered. U.S. government will begin a review of the status of Chinook salmon. Everything's endangered. 90% of global pelagic fish populations in the ocean, the food fish, are gone. They're gone. Think about that. From the UK Guardian, migratory freshwater fish populations down by more than 80% since 1970. And they were already down in 1970. So where does that put us? And 80% is a conservative figure. They say catastrophic global decline due to dams, mining, diverting water, and polluting threatens humans and ecosystems. Study warrants. Populations are declining in all regions of the world, the report says. But it's happening faster in South America and the Caribbean, where the abundance of these species has dropped by 91% over the past 50 years. All these statistics are very conservative. It's far worse than that. Enjoy fish while you can, even though it's radioactive and toxic, full of plastic now nanoparticles you won't have any soon wait and see on that upbeat note you're listening to the weekly installment of global alert news the bad news broadcast installment number 459 may 25th 2024 this is dane wigington your host global alert news is brought to you by geoengineeringwatch.org the largest and most visited website in the world on the subject of climate intervention operations known as geoengineering recordings of this broadcast commercial free non-political you can find it on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org under the recent column and on the Dane Wigington YouTube channel. Geoengineering Watch wishes to express our deepest gratitude to those that have helped us to expand our reach and thus our voice in this desperate last hour effort to sound the alarm. If you're on our email list, please put us on your email contact book so that our mail outs don't go to the spam files. Please help us to share the groundbreaking documentary, The Dimming, which fully exposes the climate engineering atrocities, now with over 12 million views on YouTube. The best way to share is by circulating the direct link to the dimming by email directly from the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Sharing directly helps us to overcome social media censorship when viewing our YouTube of the dimming or 
Global Alert News or any other Geoengineering Watch video on YouTube, please subscribe, share, and comment, all of which helps us to circulate critically important data to a much wider audience. About reaching all those that still aren't looking up and connecting the dots, here's one way. By starting the conversation with Geoengineering Watch awareness raising materials, which can be found on our homepage. Again, our only goal to provide activists what they need to move this fight forward. Our very high quality printed materials, shocking images, and documents. We pass these materials on for less than our overall cost of producing and shipping. Our only goal, to stop the insanity in our skies. We have Geoengineering Watch hoodies, Geoengineering Watch shirts, and photos of both on our homepage. We have scannable business cards and bumper stickers, all of them effective tools to strike up a conversation on the climate engineering issue. Reaching a critical mass, again, the only way forward in this fight. If we can expose it, we can stop it. If you're willing to share a picture of yourself with a Geoengineering Watch t-shirt or hoodie, perhaps at a local mall or some other busy location, please send your photo to us so that we can post it as part of our activist compilation, which is now part of our materials page. The images encourage others to make their voices heard in this all-important battle to sound the alarm. And to all those that are doing their absolute best given their individual circumstances, you have my deepest forever gratitude. Thank you for standing with me in this battle that's a must-win fight for everything that we hold dear. Pressing on more headlines of heat and meltdown in the polar regions in this case, which absolutely affects all of us everywhere. From fortune.com, Texas power prices briefly soar 1,600%. And these are very short increments. I get people that think this isn't so. They don't bother to look up the data that I'm citing. Please verify everything I state on this broadcast. I'm not asking anybody to believe me. I never have. I never will. Please verify everything we report. That's our goal, get you to investigate. So our 1,600% as spring heat wave is expected to drive record demand for energy. From MSN.com, NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, warns Texans of early heat wave temperatures to soar. Still more. It's coming. From NBC News, extreme heat hits Texas and Florida early in the season. Scorching heat and humidity have descended over parts of Texas and the Gulf Coast. Everywhere, again, you, you have to add the humidity into this. If, if you're somewhere where it's hot, take your ambient temperature, go online, search the heat index calculator. There's several sources. Plug in the temperature and the humidity, and you will be shocked at how fast the heat indexes go up. When the humidity goes up, which has not been the case in the past, generally when it gets hotter, the humidity goes down, but no more because there is, again, more water vapor held in a warmer atmosphere. Now the humidities are going up too, and that is very, very dangerous for all life, including human life. From Forbes.com, Key West hits 115 degree heat index in May as it prepares for another extremely hot summer. That's an understatement. Mexico declares state of alert for power grid, went over part of that earlier. Heat waves knocking their grid down. AP News, another parallel headline, Mexico's drought and heat wave and water shortages are so bad, even police are blocking traffic and protests. From that report, in recent months, residents of some Mexico City neighborhoods have regularly taken to forming human chains to block boulevards to demand water. They should be demanding that climate engineering stop. It would rain, and they would have water. The report then says normally police seek to redirect traffic, but on Wednesday of this week, some officers were themselves manning a protest blockade near the Capitol's iconic Independence Monument. The officers stood blocking six lanes of traffic, saying that their barracks hadn't had water for a week. Think about that. Police stations in a, an, an urban city of 22 million people with no water, and that the bathrooms were unusable. Let's stop there for a moment again to consider. If the police are joining the protest, and who could blame them? And they have no water in their police stations. And how soon till the food shelves empty out again and people have no water to drink? City of 22 million in the case of Mexico City. How long till Mad Max erupts with a vengeance and starts to spread like a wildfire? Let's look at Haiti. Look at countries in Africa right now. All, all the same. Middle East starting to unfold in much the same way. Anarchy. Chaos. Carnage. It's all coming and those that don't believe it have their eyes wide shut. This is, again, we're, we're back to the proverbial car going 100 miles an hour, 10 feet from impact, and people pretending that impact isn't going to happen. It's not logical or rational. Pretending something that's inevitable is not real doesn't stop it from occurring. Only in facing it do we have any chance of 
altering a trajectory. You can't do that by ramming your head in the sand. Far too many people are doing exactly that. And where's all that water going that Mexico doesn't have? U.S. Southeast. High pressure heat dome baking so much of Mexico and the Caribbean and the ionosphere heater induced high pressure heat dome over that region, compressing air, increasing that heat, and the upper level winds rotate clockwise around that northern hemisphere high pressure heat dome. And that then diverts so much of that moisture into the U.S. southeast where it's coming down in deluges and then it's funneled north, collided with the zonal flow of moisture being manipulated in from the Pacific, chemically nucleated, and when you collide again, that cooler surface airflow with the warm flow out of the record warm Gulf of Mexico, you create atmospheric instability, you create cyclonic rotations. There are so many layers. This is so complex, but the bottom line is, when Americans look up and they see what's happening in our skies and they somehow tell themselves there's nothing going on so they can go about their life and think it's going to continue as it is, Good luck with that. I tried to warn far enough ahead of time for it to matter. You don't, if someone's standing in the freeway with their back to traffic, you don't warn them the second before a semi runs them over. You try to give them some time to maneuver. I've tried to do that. But now the equation we face is non-linear. It's accelerating at unimaginable speed. Once you start the dominoes falling, they fall faster and faster, and that makes the power structure more desperate and dangerous than ever because as the public begins to wake up to the peril they face, the power structure will play bigger cards, much bigger, and that could happen at any point. There are many more dire breaking headlines that I had wanted to cover, but there just isn't time on this one-hour radio broadcast. But here's the bottom line. No functional environment, no web of life, no humans. Here's an essay title that sums it all up from O.K. Doomer. Lying to ourselves at the end of the world. Is how many are choosing, consciously or otherwise, to dive ever deeper into eyes wide shut denial even as the proverbial walls are caving in on every side and from every direction? More times than I can remember, I've had otherwise intelligent individuals say to me that it just can't be this bad. They say things like, the planet's resilient, nature will find a way, technology will save us from ourselves. The final retort from many such individuals is, it just can't be this bad, because it can't be. What exactly does that mean? Things can't be this grim because that reality doesn't fit into their frame of reference? But unfortunately, denial doesn't alter the equation. I'm sometimes told that I speak with too much intensity, too much passion, and too rapidly. And I confess, I do speak in this manner. But I ask, what's one to do when bearing witness to unfolding and accelerating self-annihilation? And not just of our own species, of countless innocent life forms. Short of a complete course correction, we will likely take the entire web of life down with us, not at some distant time in the future, but on the extremely near-term horizon. Is such a mathematical certainty worth an intense narration of passion and of covering it in rapid succession in the attempt to cover as much of the wider horizon headlines in the span of an hour as possible? It is for me like witnessing a car full of completely oblivious passengers parked dead center on a railroad crossing. The radio's blaring, the passengers are partying, even as the oncoming train hurtles toward them at blinding speed. Lights flashing, horn echoing through the darkness. Impact of inconceivable ferocity and totality is now inevitable. And yes, that's what I just said. And I've stated for the entire length of this long and arduous journey of 20 years now, to sound the alarm. Impact is coming. Those that cling to the technology will magically save us from ourselves mantra will either walk away from such a dire conclusion as that which I just stated, no matter how towering the mountain of data is to support the conclusion, or the it just can't be that bad crowd often responds with, well then why try it all? And here's my answer. As I've always stated and always will, doing what is right will always be right, no matter how much the odds are against turning the tide. So long as we're still standing, we still stand a chance. 
As I've also stated for the entire length of this battle, the hallmark of a healthy mind is an unyielding commitment to fully face the truth, no matter how dire that truth is. And to all those wide awake and courageous activists and individuals who have and are doing exactly that, you have my undying gratitude. If this is you, you know who you are already. To those that have so far elected to sit the bench with eyes wide shut, please, please wake up, look up, get up, and join us in the fight for everything that matters, for all that we hold dear, literally for life on Earth. Check the activist suggestions link on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org for specific instructions on how you can help to move this fight forward. Sharing credible data from a credible source is key. Please make your voice heard, make every day count, it's now or never. Until next week, this is Dane Wigington from geoengineeringwatch.org.